I'm Daz. And on the bench today is another piece of Kodar equipment. A Kodar mini clipper. I believe this one is from about 1976. Um, it's all transistor. Um, the previous one I believe had a valve in from the circuit diagram I found, but this one is all transistorized. Um, basically, you've got a band set, which is your main tuning control. You've got a band spread, which is your fine tuning control. A regeneration control and an off and volume control. Around the back we've got loudspeaker terminals, aerial and earth terminals and a jack socket for headphones. And you can see there's a valve holder there. I've got three of the four coils that would plug in there to affect a wave change. So basically one covers medium wave second one I've got is one and a half to four megahertz and this one is four to fourteen megahertz so presumably the set of coils that uh, brought it up to thirty megahertz um, has gone missing unfortunately um, I believe that Kodar stopped trading not long after they introduced this one this model I think it was probably the last one that uh, they made but uh, basically it's a TRF receiver, Tune Radio Frequency Receiver and it has regeneration which is posit basically positive feedback so you feed some of the amplify signal back into the input and uh, you just keep it just below the uh, point of when it starts to oscillate and uh, it increases the gain greatly um, this only has three transistors in as you'll see in a minute Yes, you can increase the regeneration to it. It does oscillate to try and decode SSB, um, but I don't know how good that is. But basically, you're providing injection at the same frequency rather than at an IF frequency. Okay, undone the feet. There we go. That's inside the uh, receiver. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. There we go. So as you can see we've got a um, valve holder which these uh, coils basically plug into. There we go. Let's leave one in for effect. We've got a conventional tuning capacitor there for the main tuning. The brand spread is electrical. The re uh, regeneration feedback is a, another capacitor. And um, we've got a switched pot for the uh, volume just out of shot there. Um, interesting the information I saw on it said well for the advert it said PP6 but I would say that would be a PP3 battery there. Um, there's, there's the jack socket. There appears to be a choice of two aerial connections here. One via a capacitor and one direct and the uh, wire is hanging there. So, um, the front end, um, the RF oscillator, is a 2N3819 FET, which I guess was quite new in the 70s. Um, then you've got two MPN silicon transistors, 2N1711, which uses a preamplifier and an output. The output is just single-ended, um, so I'm not expecting this to be a mighty loud driving a loudspeaker. Um, the band spread tuning is done by just a diode and uh, that's just a plain old um, diode rated at uh, one and a half amps believe it or not. It's a Westinghouse one apparently uh, this diode. Um, I've got no information with it or circuit diagram but I've done a bit of reverse engineering so uh, we'll have a look at that in a minute. This radio would have been made as a kit, um, so you bought a kit of parts and I think it was about £11, um, which is probably a lot more in today's money. Um, let me just rotate this to give you a shot of the whole thing. So yes, it is built on a circuit board. The previous model 
information is a hybrid so it's got a valve for the RF stage and uh, a high tension battery but what I've done is I've um, done my best to uh, trace out the circuitry and uh, here is some of it a bit of a mess so I've redrawn it a little bit better so here we go right so this is the uh, circuit for the Kodar uh, that I've drawn up so basically each plug-in coil has got three co coils on it one of them is the aerial coupling because you um, have a, a, the aerial will tend to have an impedance about 500 ohms so you need to sort of couple that in so you don't dampen this tuned circuit this third coil here is fed from the source of the RF amplifier so basically any signal coupled in here goes into the gate and is amplified and then goes back through this coil and this capacitor and then by adjusting this variable capacitor you can adjust the amount of uh, coupling into it so uh, the, the amount of positive feedback so it's a case of just gently adjusting that until you get just enough positive feedback and not going to oscillation unless you're trying to decode something that's SSB the only problem with a circuit like this is there may be a certain amount of uh, the oscillation coupling back out the aerial so effectively you've got a, a transmitter um, this is the band spread and it's done it uses the effect that all diodes change capacitance to a certain extent as the reverse voltage across them is in, um, increased or decreased so rather than pay for a varicap diode it's just a, a normal silicon diode in there so Westinghouse 100 volt 1 1.5 amps this output stage is quite small you've just got two transistors in class A driving an output uh, transformer so it's only going to be tens of milliwatts I should think um, it's drawn about 40 milliamps so most of that's going to be in this uh, transistor so yeah it's only going to be a few tens of milliwatts it's a very unusual circuit how the volume control is implemented I don't quite understand that I wonder if it was some sort of automatic biasing or something but not with a coupling capacitor there it's interesting these transistors are a bit over on the big side one amp um, transistors it seems a little bit of a um, a bit oversized but perhaps they were surplus transistors that were cheap and easy available at the time right well I've bought it up slowly it's drawn about 40 milliamps which is fair enough because it's class A output stage the amplifiers lively um, got the medium wave coil in it Let's see if receives anything at all they've got a few oh oh yes that's the regeneration of Justin then you can hear it's beginning to go into oscillation so I'll just back that off let me bring this up so you can see what I'm doing well the regeneration is a good sign that something's happening but I'm quite disappointed that I've not managed to receive even lo my local station, but the regeneration definitely working. Right, I've given the uh, valve holder a little bit of a clean, and I've also attached an aerial now, which is a few meters long, to the direct input. So. So you can see the effect of the regeneration. So it's just a case of putting just enough gain in before it bursts into oscillation. I was going to say, I hope I'll be able to at least pick that up. It's only two miles away. Now I better get off it because uh, it's playing music.
it's not exactly sensitive, is it? Well, I'm on the uh, one and a half to four meg uh, range now, and I have got a shortwave station on it. The band spread is more effective. Now I've got the uh, 4 to 14 meg coil in. I had thought of uh, hooking this up to my uh, top band aerial but I honestly think it would probably be a bit too much for it and I'd probably receive far too many stations um, and there wouldn't be enough selectivity to uh, null a lot of them out but uh, I thought a, a 12 foot aerial would be sort of typical of perhaps someone might have just set up indoors um, as an example of uh, what performance you'd get. Driver transistor. Gain 101 so on the right on the nose. Good. Right, let's measure the output transistor. Really? Okay. Try something different. Huh, interesting, exactly the same result. Hmm, interesting. Uh, don't make assumptions, I think, with a piece of old equipment like this, even though it's got silicon transistors in. Right, this is a BFY51. It's got a gain of 155 according to this. It looks relatively normal, so I'm going to swap over the remaining good transistor into the output stage and put that as a driver. Yes, that is a lot louder now. Interesting, the uh, bias current has now dropped to about 20 milliamp instead of 40 um, so I'm not quite sure what was going on with the other transistor um, but the audio output appears greater but that might just be because I've got a little bit more gain in the driver but it doesn't seem to be cli clipping really still um, makes me wonder whether the FET's a bit iffy as well Well, the FET tests as a FET. Interesting, this one uh, reads the other way round. Hmm, interesting. So that one is source. Right, okay. It's really interesting. I've got a brand new one here. Um, this doesn't identify the leads either so I'm gonna have a look and double check that this FET is in the right way in here. You've got a favourite topping? You want to share with the rest of well, going back to my first uh, go with this I can now pick up my local radio station with just a few foot of wire um, so uh, changing the FET has increased the sensitivity somewhat. Because the hazard up ahead. Red X signs are there to keep us safe. Oh, moving. Because we all want to be somewhere. Somewhere like. Oh, I can just about get Radio Caroline on it now.
Well, I find this a, a little bit of fun, but uh, as far as uh, using a regenerative receiver, it is a little bit fiddly. I don't understand why the knobs are so small on here. I wonder if they're, someone's put replacement knobs on. Um, because having such small knob makes tuning this really difficult, especially when you've got like 10 megs uh, from one end to the other. Um, so it could really do with some bigger knobs, I think. I know regenerative receivers are supposed to be quite sensitive, but even with the new transistors in it still isn't really highly sensitive. Um, perhaps I'll have a go at putting it on my top band aerial, but I've got a feeling that might be a little bit too much for it. It might uh, overload. Just in case anyone was interested in the inductances of the um, coils, here they are. Well, I've got it on my uh, top band area, and as I suspected, I can hear the local transmitter virtually all over the place. Yeah, I can hear music continuously along the band. Include, increasing the regeneration does help with the selectivity. I must admit it's the first time I've used a regenerative um, shortwave receiver and uh, it'll probably be the last. It's not easy trying to tune over a, a large area of the band, fine tune it and keep the regeneration right. So uh, I, I've got to admit it's not an experience I particularly enjoy at all. To be honest it really could do with a, an RF stage at the front I think to increase sensitivity and isolate the uh, aerial from the uh, from the uh, unit. Anyway, an interesting receiver. Um, probably the last one of the Mini Clippy series I would think. Anyway, I hope you found that some interest and uh, I'll see you soon for the next video. Thanks for watching.